So Don, you've been an assistant here for 23 years in different capacities, and now you get to have your own defense. You get to run a defense. What is a Don Pelham defense going to look like? Uh, it's going to look similar to the last defense, but I think it'll be a little more aggressive, um, a little more attitude, a little more uh, swag. <laughs> um, but it's going to be, you know, basically the same, you know, Structurally the same, you know, the three, four concept, but attitude, swag, and it's going to be a lot more aggressive. Why is that important <laughs> to you, to bring that swagger and that aggressiveness? You know, I, I just think that, that uh, when you watch, you know, when you watch today's youth, those guys, you, football can be, it can be a drag. It, it practices hard, it's, and you have to have that youthful spirit about you've got to fly around you've got to have fun and, and when i refer to swag i don't I, i'm referring to that youthful spirit of flying around and having fun not being jerks but get that 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 youthful that little skip bounce back in our step you know a little 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 half crazy just kind of out there going for it so that that's what i refer to it that's important i think that's that's part of it you have to have schemes and your x's and o's and your fundamentals and then you got to bring that spirit how is the team received that? What's the reception been from the guys? You know, uh, thus far, um, I think it's been wonderful. I mean, the kids are starting, how, how should I say this? Let me phrase this. What we are asking them to do, which is a little different than in the past, um, it's, it's coming. It's, it's, it's starting to happen. And, you know, we haven't had a lot of official meetings. We've done a lot of things through word of mouth, through meet with couple young men about this and a couple about that and some seniors and some leaders and then let them spread kind of the direction but it's been I think it's taken off and moving in the right direction. Many of your 23 years here have been coaching with Nick Aliotti. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from how he handled this job that you'll take to being the defensive coordinator? You know I think Nick's strength was that Nick was a very uh, strong student. Nick would study hours and hours and he could Nick could identify what you had to do to stop the other team. He was great at that, um, but he had a tireless work ethic. I mean, he just grinded and grinded. I think that's, that's the key in this position. You've, you've got to keep working. You've got to find that one or two extra things that you can give your players, that little nugget, that when it happens, they win. And, and that's, what, that's what Nick did a great job of, and that's what I know I'm going to take over and carry over from him. What are you going to do differently from Nick on and off the field? You know, we're different people, you know, so obviously off the field, I'm going to require a little more of everybody, meaning just football, a little more football year round, just thinking about football a little more than you have in the past. And the, the competition is going to be a little steeper because the positions will be open more and you're going to have to fight. So competition brings the best out of everyone. So we're going to we're going to get the best out of everyone because we're going to increase that uh, on the field um, I mean, off the field and on the field. You know, I'm, I organize, I see things a little differently. So I'm organized practice, our portion of practice a little differently. We're gonna break into some smaller groups, get more reps, address some issues that, that, have, that have came up, and then bring it back to a whole. So a whole, we're gonna break it down those parts, grind it up real good and put it back to a whole. That's, then that's a, that's a philosophy. When I asked Mark Helfrich on signing day why he hired you, he told a story about backpacks, about all of, the, all of your linebackers having their backpacks organized before meetings early in the day. Why is that important? Well, I think what Coach Helfrich was, uh, was um, speaking to was just our philosophy, uh, which is you're early, you're on time, you're prepared, you're organized. So what he was, what he was alluding to was that <clears throat> those shoes, backpacks, it wasn't just thrown in a pile. It was, and that's just part of a way of thinking, organized, detailed, to carry it over to the classroom and, and now we're gonna spill that over to the entire defense. Yeah, Mark said that he asked you, why doesn't everybody do this? And you, your answer was, because I'm not in charge of everybody. Now that you are in charge of at least half the team, is that, are all the backpacks, are we gonna see 50 backpacks lined up early in the morning every day? We're gonna definitely see if, if there's an event structured, things are gonna be organized. It's not gonna, it's gonna be organized. That's gonna happen. What's so important about organization? <laughs> Organization is a way of life. I mean, you know, you get up, do you make your bed, do you not make your bed? I mean, do, how do you do things? And, and, you know, obviously the more organized we can get these young men now, it's just going to help them in their, in their lives. And so it's, it's a big deal because we have a four or five year window to change them. 
And if we can get those young men who, who just cram stuff in their backpack and when it's time to study, they can't find stuff, to all of a sudden write it neat and nice and have it organized so that when it's time, it's there, we've made them better. And we've made ourselves better. And we've made everyone better. You've been able to, in your, in your time here, have an impact on smaller groups of guys, 10 guys at a time. You mentioned the four to five growing people, you know, growing players as men, mm -hmm. four to five years at a time. It's been 10 guys. Now it's going to be 50 that you're in charge of. Is there any part of you that's going to miss having a smaller group to, to be in charge of and to, and to mold? You know, no, because I'm still going to have the inside backers. It's just now that a lot more of, of our, I'm called our philosophy will go out to the other assistant coaches, will go down to their players, and so we're expanding the way we think already. So, no, I mean, now it's just going to give me a chance to, to get a little closer to some of the other guys that, you know, a guy that, for instance, maybe I recruited that I'm not around as much. Now I can really extend what, it, what the thing said in his home, I can actually, you know, I can fulfill because, yes, I am working with you now. So it just gives me an opportunity to branch out and get more involved with some of the other players. You're known among the fan base for how you dress, for your suits before the game. Does it bother you at all that maybe more fans know you as the coach that dresses really well than the coach who did what he did with the linebackers for the past so many years? Not at all. I, not at all. I didn't think twice about it. I, I don't think twice about it on game day or... No, but I, I, I do appreciate that, that I'm doing something good and I am dressing well and people appreciate that. Is that part of, is dressing well part of an overall philosophy of yours of how you run things, of how you want to live and, and run your, your defense? Uh, you know, when I, when I was a young coach, <clears throat> I, um, I was out on the recruiting ro road and, and I ran into a couple of older guys and, and I, I thought I was, you know, thought I was dressed appropriately and, and, and uh, these guys walked in and they, they were different. They looked different and carried themselves different. And, and, uh, and both of them are still coaching, you know, one's in the NFL, they're both in the NFL. But they said, you know what, when, you know, if, if you ever get a chance, you need to, need to step it up. And that's back in 1993 or four. And so on their advice, I've tried to step it up. You, you played here all the way back in the early 1980s, and you've been here pretty much for three decades, nonstop since then. How does being here through the building of the Casanova Center and the Mo Center, the expansion of Watson, and, and now the Hatfield Dowling Complex, how does that perspective help you run this team? You know, um, from, a, from a grateful heart, from a very appreciative standpoint of, of what this is, you know, people come in now and they think, Oregon's always been this way, and this is just how it is. And sometimes they may not, they may take it for granted. And so from, from my perspective, it's, it's a grounding of where, where it was and where we've came from and now how we did it. Because that's the part they don't get. You know, the young men come here and, it, you know, this is great. We're, we're number three, we're number four, whatever. And we're going, no, 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 no. Here's how we got here. And this process is starting again. And it's not about what we have, it's how hard you work um, to continue to grow the program. And so, you know, just being here and having all that history and knowing how hard we have worked, because this, this has been a, it's been a battle. And it's been a good journey, but it's, it's been a battle. There's so many of you on the coaching staff that have been through that entire journey and, and through that battle. How important is the continuity in this program? And you're just the next example of that. How important is continuity in, in growing this program to where it is now? You know, I think that the continuity, first, I, I thank the administration, you know, our, our people have been fabulous because they gave us a chance. Even when Coach Brooks was here, they gave us a chance to stay here and build it. And I think the reason we've been able to build, you know, um, is because of continuity. Mm -hmm. You know, as we, you know, back when we didn't have all the talent, you know, we were, we found some ways to coach, we found some strategies, we found some things that worked and we were still able to, to kind of build it. Right. Had we been turning over coaches way back then, we probably would have never got to a certain level. So I think the continuity has been really a key factor in the development of this program. So many years as an assistant, have you had a chance to go elsewhere to be a defensive coordinator? I have not had a chance to go, well, I've had some opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, along the way. Why'd you stay? 
they, weren't, they were not the right opportunity. And in my mind, I have a great job. I've always had a great job. And I, I made a decision a long time ago, I'm not going to run around the country chasing jobs. Mm -hmm. That this job is a better job than most of those jobs out there. So I'm not going to hop on that, on that train um, and, and decided to you know, stay around. I've never, I've never talked to a coach, uh, like the head coach or anyone about, hey, I got a call. I've never mentioned, and I, I'll never mention names of places because it doesn't matter. Right. It was just, this was a better situation. Did you have your sights set on being the defensive coordinator at Oregon? You know, it's, it's, tough, to, it's tough to get, you know, the coordinator position job, you know. Right. Uh, it was something I would always like to do, but it was a better, you know, but it was a better job for me to stay here and be an assistant than to chase around the country trying to become a coordinator. And so my, my decision was I was going to then stay here and if, see if it happened or stay here and be a career assistant. And I was happy with both. So, um, you know, obviously I was blessed and it happened, but I was happy with both. What do you enjoy most about being an Oregon Duck? You're not from the state, mm -hmm. but you've you came here to play, and, and you've been here for really over 30 years. Yeah. What do you enjoy most about this place and about being a Duck? Friendships. Amazing friendships. I mean, from the guys that I knew when I first arrived here to now, it's just, it's just the friendships, man. It's, it's great, and it's all centered around Oregon and Oregon football, yeah. and that's, that's what I enjoy the most. And it's not only just the former players, the guys I played with, but the players that have came behind me and all the people in the community. You know, it's kind of, we, we started this, this program and we started this journey together and there's so many people in the community that have just kind of been right there with us and we've all grown and grown and grown. And, and you know, that's, that's it, man, that's the stuff. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Now that you have a chance to put your stamp on more of the team as the defensive coordinator, down the road and whenever your time here is, is done, mm -hmm. what do you want to be known as? Great leader of men. I want to be known as the guy that, that, that uh, when those kids come back five years, 10 years, 15 years with their families, you know, they're, they're telling stories about how the coaches got them to do something they didn't want to do and all of a sudden how it changed them. And now they really appreciate it and how they've grown and, and, and you know, all the things that the coaches talked about, about, you know, we talked to our kids about being great community leaders and the best dads ever. And, and that, 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 that man on the block that when the little kids around the corner break a window and don't know to talk to and they're afraid to talk to their parents, they run to him. To be that, that guy that when he walks in a room, he's different and people can tell. And that's, that's what the goal is. So if, if those young men grow up to be those types of people and come back and they're proud about the, of the university and their experience, then we've, we've done our job. Thanks for your time, Don. Thank you.